Thank you very much for the introduction. And it's a great pleasure to be here to tell you a little bit about uh, the work that I'm doing, but more importantly, to uh, tell you more about the model that I hope you've all seen outside of the framed structure of the Kiliswa Temple, which actually is located in Changunarayan. Um, Changunarayan is a very significant World Heritage Site. It's uh, set out on the edge of the valley and um, it contains, it's one of the earliest sites, one of the earliest World Heritage Sites as well, um, dating back from the uh, uh, 5th, 6th century. And um, it's an enclosed temple complex with the main temple, Changu Narayan itself, in the center, and the little temple of Kiliswar, which I have located uh, at the top left-hand corner. Um, the, one of the marvelous things about this temple is that it does have an incredible collection of art and uh, architecture. Uh, it's famous for a collection of sixth century well, uh, stone statues dating from the Lichavi period. And this beautiful piece is the Vishnu seated on the Garuda. And uh, it really symbolizes this wonderful World Heritage Site. <clears throat> I can't really move on to the model until I've actually described a little bit about uh, the temple itself, Prasad Changanarayan. It was uh, founded uh, in the 5th, 6th century, as I've already said, and um, it was actually restored after a major fire in the 17, 1770 AD. Um, and the surprising thing is that this temple, which is a massive structure, was um, uh, has... has uh, survived at least three major earthquakes. And in the latest earthquake, there was a certain amount of damage, but the main structure, it survived. It's a very, very popular pilgrimage center, uh, for mostly for the local tribes. And as you can see in the picture, it's here thronging with people who come to pay homage and worship to uh, Narayan, as well as to have picnics and what have you. So it's a, it's a really remarkable place to be. And it's one of the earliest temples in the Kathmandu Valley. Uh, and um, it's actually one of the least spoilt from major development. It's uh, but I thought this would be of interest to you. It's actually named Changu is a derivation of Champaka, or Chap, which is the one of the trees, forests uh, that has grown around uh, the main temple complex. And uh, sadly, there are only about four of the original Chap trees uh, in existence. So one of the things we're hoping to do uh, over the... Uh, next few years is to replant a lot of the a lot of these cheese there the fascination of particularly of the uh, international wood culture has been that uh, the method of construction of these temples and i thought i would uh, just introduce the some of these features um, we're talking about a temple, this massive great temple is actually basically a timber frame structure uh, with a brick cladding. And um, the other interesting feature with this particular temple is that it's set on a solid natural uh, foundation, uh, a huge great chunk, chunk of bedrock comes out from the valley's edge and the temple, the base foundation was actually chipped out of this huge great hunk of stone and the temple was placed on it. And this is really rather surprising that uh, 
as a result of the most recent earthquake. I remember going up there and being totally uh, mortified by seeing this, uh, the, the rest of the structures around it, the courtyard buildings, uh, completely fallen. But the temple itself, the eaves were in exactly horizontal position and uh, the, hardly a tile had moved. What had happened was that the base of the temple, sitting on the stone, had moved, twisted, and a lot of the uh, facing brickwork had fallen out, but, and it actually exposed the, um, the main uh, timber frame. So I was greatly relieved. Now, as time is very short, I'm uh, going to deal particularly with the Kileswa temple itself. So, but for those that can't make it, I will give you a very quick and uh, brief introduction. It is a very magnificent uh, small temple, and it's unique in itself in that uh, this is a Shiva temple. It's actually a Shiva, Parvati, a Shiva Pashupati temple. Um, and it's the only one in this complex. And it's in itself. It was founded in 1770 at about the time when the main temple uh, underwent a major fire. The temple is uh, a, a major um, attraction, as I've said already, um, to pilgrims. And um, it caught the eye of the, Ameri the uh, German ambassador who uh, called me up uh, not so long ago and said, look, I've got some money and I'd be very happy to support the restoration of this temple. And I said, fine, you know. Uh, he said, how long will it take? And I said, about three months. And he said, oh, um, can you get it finished by the 1st of April? And I said, well, obviously we'll do our very best and so one of the reasons uh, my slides are a little bit uh, upside down, inside out, is that I've been working solidly over the last uh, two weeks to try and meet this deadline. But um, it is a very significant site, and um, I'm hoping that we will be able to meet the deadline. One of the most important things is, and, and made it even more difficult for us, is that it is actually a... Um, a very popular uh, place of worship and uh, the Pujari who you see here dressed in, in yellow uh, he um, performs two pujas uh, one in the morning and one in the evening every day and has done since I'm told since the beginning when the temple was founded here you have just uh, uh, some examples I took before we started work, uh, these, because of uh, the, your general interest, these are timber or wood carvings. Uh, on the left-hand side, you have a beautiful door with a torana over it. I'll show you more details of that later on. And then on the right-hand side, this beautiful uh, uh, tunasi, local name, or strut, which is a wood carving um, it's in one piece save for the arms and these arms are holding the various symbols um, that, uh, the, that are associated with the particular divinity. On the left hand side, as I say, I hope most of you have seen the, okay, you've seen the model outside and I just wanted to prove one of the great uh, points of discussion that have been over the last two or three weeks um, that these temple complexes, the Nawari style buildings, um, are in fact a major timber frame with brick infill. And on the uh, right hand side, you can see the brickwork, uh, you can see a hand, at some, I'm sorry it's very small, but you can see a hand coming out, uh, which is actually the Pujari, pulling down the brickwork, and you can see uh, on his left hand side was uh, a piece of timber uh, which is the main one of the main structural posts we stripped out uh, having propped up the building we stripped out the 
timbers, the brickwork to expose the timbers. And on the left-hand side, here you can see the timbers as we found them. These were 1770 probably. Um, and several of them have been uh, rather badly damaged by uh, water and uh, by, uh, by the uh, uh, rodents who were in there to, to uh, feed off the offerings that were made to the main divinity. And um, so on the right-hand side, you've got um, a picture showing the things that have looked blue to you are in fact uh, 12 ton hydraulic car jacks, which we find is one of the most useful pieces of equipment because you can pump the building up very, very slowly and then move the structure underneath it. So these are invaluable to our work. On the, uh, and here you see the brickwork has been removed and unfortunately it's not very clear on this screen but you can look through the black hole as it were and you can see the vertical uh, posts which were completely enclosed in the brickwork. On the right hand side you can see the brickworks slowly being built back. Um, and I thought it would just be interesting to compare the uh, original building with the famous model on the right hand side. Now I thought you'd just be interested again because it relates to timber in the, um, the, the repair works that we've been undertaking. The, the uh, craftsman has been working with me for over 20 years and he has meticulously uh, inserted uh, seasoned timber into a major crack that ran up through the, the Tunasi. And um, it's a very delicate work, as you can see here, the lighter color is pieces that he's patched in, um, replacing the damaged sections. And these will all be cleaned, which is the next process that I was going to show you. We're training up a bunch of local young ladies, um, we've got about uh, eight of them now, working on a, a system of cleaning using uh, very simple techniques and uh, the results are really quite stunning. This is a window um, in situ before it has been cleaned and uh, this is the same window which has been taken down, repaired and as well as being cleaned by, uh, by the team. These are the wonderful Tunasi Again, the central one is being cleaned. The one on either side are waiting cleaning. Uh, but it gives you some idea of the quality of work that uh, was being undertaken. And here is a, a very nice and very confusing drawing showing the incredible complexity of these timber frames. And with that, I'd like to thank you for listening. And uh, I hope that some of you will be able to come and join us up in uh, Changu, where I'll have more time to explain the work that we're doing. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>